Am I a KROS expert? Probably not. But if you are, you know what we are talking about here. So I can press this button and you see something is happening in the multi-viewer here. And uh, you probably designed that if you are a broadcast engineer with KROS. I pressed another button, something animated. I pressed the third button and that also animates something. So these snapshots are also available being brought up for, on this row by this way of like saying, okay, let me just pick what this row is gonna do for me. I pick snapshots, we have snapshots available. So that's basically how it, it, it works. And I would even guess that we can put in an, an alternative label and I'll just go put in awesome. And I have no clue if this is gonna be picked up on the device. Yes, it did. It is awesome. Panasonic KROS is an incredible flexible switcher system with a huge potential and to manage all that flexibility and potential in a stressful production environment, you need a simple tactile switcher surface. Skahoy is a KROS Alliance partner and as such we have worked closely with Panasonic to bring out a simple control experience based on Skahoy's new and amazing Master Key 1 V2 with blue pill inside. Skyhoy controller products operating with the Kairos, they can be used to switch up to 10 layers in up to 20 scenes and of course with feedback and your custom naming from Kairos, etc. You can operate transitions, you can execute macros or you can change auxiliary outputs. Even playback control of VTR and RAM players is available from the panel. The beauty of Skyhoy controllers is their ability to go together as modules that seamlessly integrate and you can start small and scale up. You can mix and match controllers. It's easy to build a size of panel that fits perfectly for your space and your budget. And it's all fully modular. However, in this video, we'll focus on a single configuration that has been designed with Panasonic to align with how Kairos works the best. On the table in front of me, we have the Master Key 1 V2 with blue pill inside. Very exciting product. We are really proud about it on a number of points. It's uh, It's been cleaned up from the previous version. It has a new awesome T-bar you also find in the Airfly Pro, etc. So we're really proud about this. And I also want to just say one thing up front. I mentioned modularity during my intro. You could add the device called MK48, which is a module that would slap on the side of the Master Key One and you could extend the number of rows. If you have watched videos about our mega panel, this type of controller, this type of enclosure will also fit into the mega panel frame. And that means the whole sizing up is really available to you. But we start small with the Master Key One and that's what we'll focus on today. We are connected to Kairos. Where's Kairos? Where's Kairos? Kairos is nowhere to be seen. Kairos is in Japan. Actually, the switcher we are talking to is on the other side of the globe. We are in Denmark right now. And over a single network cable, we have control and power. The power is not coming from Japan. I think it's produced by a windmill in Denmark. But the signals are traveling across the globe. And that's in itself kind of exciting for the idea of remote production, right? Um, I, I want to stress that the integration with Kairos is one that is based on Kairos being physically available on a device for you, on a network, in this case in Japan, but it's not in the cloud. This is not Kairos in the cloud. That's coming at a later date, I hope. But right now it's like you have a Kairos system on your network and we are connected to that. So that's what we are doing here. Let's first look at how the Master Key One is connected to the Kairos. Now, um, it's, it's really basic. Inside Blue Pill products, we have Reactor. Reactor is the software that connects to panels and to devices and brings it all together with a configuration. And it looks like this. This beautiful interface has the Keras configuration shown right here. So basically, you can see we have a Master Key 1 panel. Um, yeah, why not just let's, let's have fun with an MK48 panel. You see, I actually have some on my network. I don't know if I dare connect to them, but okay, let's try. So now I selected a panel, which is, is a Master Key 48, MK48 uh, panel here. And it's actually possible for me to connect that into the reactor run by the Master Key one. But it's, it's not a topic for this video. So let me just quickly move that away. It's just to say that the modularity is super easy to add in here. Uh, but right now, let's just move it out again. On the right side, we have Kairos, which is a device that we have basically added here. And you'll see in a moment that there are ways in the engineering menu of the Master Key One where you could select a secondary Kairos system 
That means if you had two KRA systems, you could just swap between them on the controller by adding another KRA system right here. But the one we have added is, is basically added as a new device. And if we look at the settings currently applied, you see that it has an IP address. Oh, surprise, right? It also has a port. It has a second port. And those are the details you need to get in line here. The, the IP address is somewhere in Japan. The ports we are connected to, they are a TCP connection and a REST API connection. So there are two ports on that IP address that needs to be open and available and known to you in order to connect. Secondly, you have username, you have a password you need, and you also have a friendly name for the interface. In this case, it's Kros. it's right there. There's a device ID. That is if you have two Kros systems, they have to have IDs. So you say this is ID number one, this is ID number two on a different IP address and so on. That's all standard stuff. This is how we do all device configuration. And with the most fancy devices, and honestly, I don't know if this applies to Kros, we have device discovery. So if you want to add cameras in and, and so on, then quite often we are able to scan the network and see what devices are around and you can just pick them from the list. Like you saw me do with the, with the panel we had just a moment ago. So that's how we do the configuration inside of Reactor. So let's take a look at the panel. Before we start looking at the panel, we need to just take a quick look at a TeamViewer window that I have up and running right here on my computer. This TeamViewer is a view into the Kros Creator. That's a software following along with Kros. If you know Kros, you know this software. Am I an expert in Kros? No. Not at all. So bear with me whenever I'm describing concepts a little bit inaccurate because I'm sure you're much more clever than me. But I'll do my best and I hope this will be all you need to see how the master key one works with Kros. There are two windows that we can look into here. There is also the multi-viewer window where we can see what we're actually doing and then the Kros creator that we'll take a look at uh, later. See, Kros is so flexible that you can define any number of MEs you want. They call it scenes. We can also manage layers on those MEs that creates, uh, you know, two and three box views and all kinds of things. But if we just start with the basic operation, you know, for switching, then we have it right here. It's the multi-viewer and we have a preview and a program row that we can use to select sources. The sources that we have available are shown here in this place, clearly visible to us. And um, obviously I can select them into the preview row right away. You'll also find as a general pattern that we have a paging key. We are looking at the first 10 sources. We are now looking at the next 10 sources and now the next 10 sources and the final 10 sources. So it's all for 20. And hmm, argument would be get yourself an MK48, right? That additional module that gives you instant access to an additional 12 sources. That would be a more pleasant way to page through. But as you can see, we can manage 40 sources easily with the master key one as well by that paging button. So that's a pattern that you can identify all across this one. So I can make a cut between the two. So you see that reflected in my multi-viewer here. I can also make an auto transition between the two. And the mix type that I have available is uh, shown right here. We have mix, we have wipe left, we have wipe uh, right, we have zoom. And down here, you can select which elements, which layers are involved in your transition, basically. And uh, right now, you see that as I'm executing this transition, I'm getting also the title bar and the logo with. So if I, if I uh, shut down the background mix, then notice as I'm making this auto transition that I'm actually transitioning out my uh, title bar and my logo on the uh, multi-viewer, as you can see. I'll just um, bring that in again. Uh, I could also do the opposite. I could also keep those two and say, okay, title bar and logo, maybe just keep the logo, but let, let the title bar um, stay in my uh, transition so that it, it, it happens uh, behind this. So that, that's a little bit about that. We have transition time up here available. We also have uh, some VTR playback stuff um, that we might come back to. And then finally, of course, we have the T-bar. And notice how the T-bar is really awesome, having this display that shows you the progress through the um, transition that's available to you on this vertically oriented display next to the T-bar. So those are all the beauties of the Master Key One. And now I want to show you how all the Kros features that allows you to do really nifty stuff is possible to, to manage on, on this panel. So now it gets a little bit complicated, and um, but, but we are pretty proud that we have been able to make this, this integration with the Kros uh, system to, 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 to manage all those uh, deep levels of features that they have. 
obviously in the creator here, you can also follow along and see as I'm changing sources on my, my um, buses here, it's also happening in the software. And obviously I can do the same if I use the software. It's also changing here on the panel right away. All the namings are coming out of the software. So if you change it in Kros Creator, it will be reflected on the displays on the master key one as well. Okay, so um, what we wanna look at now is uh, the delegation. And um, first of all, as I mentioned, we have a number of scenes available. I think if we go into ooh, Mixer, oh, wait a second. Uh, no, scenes, there it was. Now you see we have the main scene that could be considered like our main ME. And then we have additional six scenes that has some composition to it. Let's just quickly take a look at that. And now again, am I a Keros expert? No, I'm not. So uh, once again, bear with me, but just a little bit of Keros education here is that these scenes, uh, they typically have a background with an ME function. And then on top, they have a layer one and layer two, like we have on, on this main scene. Then in the box view, we also have a background. We have left, we have right. On the three box layout, guess what? We have three layers on top, right? We have uh, bottom left, bottom right, top right, left, and, and uh, top right over here. Um, okay, so that's our different scenes. And notice what happened when I press the delegation button here. That basically allows me to say, okay, what are you going to have here? And I have currently the main, but I could also bring up the two box. And that means right now, and as you can see in the little title of the tile, it says two box. And that means that the sources I'm selecting are now going to the two box view. And um, okay, let's just uh, press some of these buttons a little bit. And also please notice how the sources that are available on the two box are in fact unique. Those are the, uh, the sources selected for the two, two box. You can, you can probably follow along here. You can see it says RAM 1, RAM 2, RAM 3, 4, CPI 1, CPI 2. So these sources, and by the way, also my ability to select them from the, the interface here, it's all reflected over on the panel as I'm working with the interface. So that should be pretty clear to you. Let's go to the main. If we go to the main, we can see that the sources are different. So let's just go back, delegate the the um, selection rows down here back to main. And you see now we have three box, two box, title, RAM one, RAM two, and so on. So the order is different. And that's all thanks to Chaos Creator. So we pick that up, bring it out on the panel, having the ability to delegate our main scene and additional six scenes onto these rows down here. That delegation principle is also being used on the upper rows. So with this button, I can now delegate what shall happen on these buttons. If I press here, I get to select my scene, but if I already selected my scene, I can select my layer. And if I have selected my layer, I can select my layer source. Let's, let's try that out. Let's do that on the two box. So basically my intention is to have the panel allow me to select sources for the left and the right side of the two box layout with these buttons. All right, so this one is related to this row of buttons. This one does the same, but for the upper row of buttons. So let's first try this one down here. I go by scene selection. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna set this row of buttons up to work with the two box scene. And then automatically it cascades down to letting me select the layer I wanna operate. So I'm gonna take left A, okay? And now I have the ability to select which source is going on that layer, all right? So as I'm pressing here, and let's just select uh, left here. You can see I selected the first source. You follow along down in the UI down here. So now I select the second one, the third one, and so on for my left layer. I'm selecting sources for that layer, all right? Um, I wonder if the multi-viewer is keeping along. Okay, let's just see. Do we have the two box layout somewhere? It should probably... Let me see. I think it's happening down here. You see this? Okay, so I could probably bring the two box up in our preview have it right there. So as you can see, I'm selecting here, I am, I'm picking sources for the left side of the two box. All right, that was su successful. Awesome. Now, um, let's, let's do the same for the upper row. I wanted the upper row to do the, the, the right side. So I'll just select this button and then say, okay, first, let me select the scene, let me have the two box, and let me now select the um, source for layer, the, the right layer, layer A. And I get a similar set of sources here. So if we just select that one here, you see it available. Currently it's the CP2 that is selected, but I could go to RAM three, can I? And then back to RAM number one. And we also see that happening here. Probably the effect is equally visible as I'm 
are selecting it on the buttons. You can see it in the multi-viewer in the, in the two box view right here. So that's basically how delegation works. And as I mentioned, there was this cascading idea to it. So say that I suddenly want to, okay, let me just change this over to, to uh, I want to select um, a, a different layer. So that has to be the background main layer. And then I have the input sources. So you can go directly to that on, on the second uh, button. So that was scenes. I want to look at some of the additional things that we have broken out on buttons here for controlling Keros. And one of them would be the snapshot. So again, pressing the delegation key here, we have as the fourth option, the ability to recall snapshots. The way I'm being told snapshots work is it's a little bit like a macro, but without timeline. So it's like recalling a setting right away, but those can be animated and so on. So you see, we have available to us three of these and I brought up the multi-viewer here. So if you know Keras, am I a Keras expert? Probably not. But if you are, you know what we are talking about here. So I can press this button and you see something is happening in the multi-viewer here. And uh, you probably designed that if you are broadcast engineer with Keros. I pressed another button, something animated. I pressed the third button and that also animates something. So these snapshots are also available being brought up for, on this row by this way of like saying, okay, let me just pick what this row is gonna do for me. I pick snapshots, we have snapshots available. So that's basically how it, it, it works. So um, macros. They are also available. We have uh, S macros. We have some G macros here. And uh, they are also available by simply um, recalling them here. So once again, we have something being replayed a little bit here. And some of it might be available to us on the multi-viewer. But you can see stuff is happening. I also find that it can be useful to go back to the main scene here and uh, if we look at uh, the control, then when we are recalling these, whatever they do, because they might be just developers going crazy on things, then we can see that uh, starting these macros is going to animate some movement on the buses here. And uh, especially the one called reset sounds very comforting to me that we can get back to the original scenario, but these are also available on this one. Once again, we select what this row of buttons do. Um, um, and that's very useful. We have now additional two functions related to the auxiliary rows. Again, auxiliary is like all the scenes, very flexible. You can set up which sources are available and so on. And I also think that I still have some kind of macro running in the background. So let me just quickly kill that. Okay, so we have, like before, some cascation, uh, cascading function here. The, if I press the auxiliary select, I get to select my aux row. And as I select the aux row, let's pick aux two. I now get to select the aux source. Okay, so um, I can now pick sources for my aux buses. So let's see if we can bring these up. Here we have the aux bus down here. So if we look at the aux buses, I'm already looking at aux two. And that's beautiful because we can see that number five is actually highlighted here on the controller. So I can quickly show you that if I press three, we get to the other source. Again, this selection of sources is individual per aux row. So if I go to three, you see there's an additional number of sources available. So interesting. What happens if I go here, I select my aux bus to three, and now you see we have that different selection of sources on that bus. We even can use the paging button to get to sources beyond 10. And that's what you see right here. Very nice. If I just want to go between say, um, layer source selection and going back to source selection for the recently used auxiliary, then it's simply a matter of going between aux source and layer source that will bring me navigation wise between those two because you can see that the title reveals that I'm currently selecting sources down to the aux buses. Let's just wrap up the demonstration of the master key one by looking at the transitions. Once again, it's a very flexible aspect of the KRA system and the transitions you have available and the, the parts that can go into the transition is related to your scenes. You'll see here in TeamView, I'm, I'm currently looking at transitions for my different scenes. And on the main scene, I have components like the background mix, the background uh, wipe, we have title bar and logo. We earlier saw how title bar and logo could be um, toggled on and off for my transition, even the background as well, when I press the auto transition, I use the fader, T-bar and so on. If you, uh, I, I just want to show you how this is related because if we go to another scene, the two box scene, 
And let's just delegate here by selecting that two box. Now you see also the transition types down here are reflect a reflection of what is in Keros. So the first four, I think you can add more than four, but we only have four buttons. And I hope that is still going to cut it for you in many cases. We have background mix L1 and L2. So they are available for, for toggling on and off with the transitions. And I think this is um, a perfect point to move into Reactor. Uh, I, I didn't spend much time talking about what we have up here, but basically just to mention that we have VTR selection, VTR control, so you can uh, you can execute stuff like play, pause, begin, end by pressing this encoder on the VTR that you have here. I just wanted to mention that. But if we transition into Reactor, and look at how Reactor is allowing you a bit of customization with respect to the transition types. This button is bringing up a configuration view where you can, for the four transitions you see right here, the transition types that you can select for the auto transition, you, uh, you can basically select them here. You need to know some numbers. I'm not a Keras expert, and if you are, maybe you know these by heart, but otherwise you can look them up inside Keras. So this is a little bit engineering-ish. But basically, this is how you define that mix, wipe left, wipe right, and zoom are the transition types available on those keys by punching it in right there. And I would even guess that we can put in an, an alternative label, and I'll just go put in awesome. And I have no clue if this is going to be picked up on the device. Yes, it did. It is awesome. Now. Before I completely leave you over in your amazement over this super cool integration, I just want to, to amaze you even more and maybe confuse you. But so far, you should have gotten the idea that this is really easy to get started by picking the configuration we have designed with Panasonic to give you a Keras-like experience on this one. But if you're adventurous, you can go into the configuration tab. And I want to show you that this is how all Blue Pill Skahoy controllers work, that they have this incredible depth of things that you can go in and customize under the hood. So when we deliver this configuration, it is actually designed by us using this configuration tool to put together all the things and set up some variables that go into selectors and so on. That's all available here. And to those of you who really want to customize your Blue Pill experience, that would be the place for you to hang out. I just want to mention it because we are all about being in the game of combining simplicity with the deepest imaginable configuration possibilities you could imagine. I have broadcast engineers in this company who has a pet feature in our products. Most of our products, the configurations we put out, will have an engineering menu. And they put a lot of pride into having some fancy key that hides it away and giving you access. And I'm actually like, where the freak was it? Yeah, if I hold down this one and then I hold down this one, I get the engineering menu. So up here on the upper row, you now have, you, you now have access to fancy features like on the first one, four-way button, if you press the size, you go between Keros device number one and number two. If you have multiple Keros systems, you can actually have one master key one controller without having to, to dabble with configuration inside Reactor, you can actually change between multiple systems live if you wanted to. Now, that's confusing to some. If it confused you, forget all about it, okay? It also tells you that it's connected. That's generally a positive message. You like that, right? This is the IP address of the system. Awesome. You can also put the panel in sleep by pressing this button. You can adjust the sleep time, which is by default two hours in this case. Dim time, where the panel dims down to save a little bit of energy and uh, hardware. We have also brightness of your displays and your LED brightness. Boring details, except for engineers, they love this kind of stuff. So if you want to exit, you press the exit button and you're back to normal. Phew. Skahoy is also working on integrating tally solutions with the Keras and audio control. So products like, for instance, the amazing WaveBot V2 can be connected to a solution like this one. And we are very excited about contributing to the whole Keras incredible productivity ecosystem. And therefore, any comments and feedback to us is really much appreciated. 
To stay in touch on any Scar Hoy Kros news, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, to our Instagram and Facebook feeds. And thanks for watching.